Hello, and welcome to episode 21 of Buxton Barrowman, where I go through Buxton's history and clean up the town at the same time. Today's episode is about Britain's many little bunkers. These things are called ROC monitoring posts, named after the military organisation behind them, the Royal Observer Corps, or ROC. The ROC were a branch of the RAF from 1925 to 1996, and their original purpose was to detect, identify, track and report aircraft all over Britain. And essentially, sky watching was their purpose, up until the branch was dissolved. But bunkers are well known for being underground and not so very helpful for monitoring the skies. So why did the ROC have bunkers? Well, the Cold War is the answer. From 1955 onwards, the ROC had been given another role, to detect and report nuclear explosions as well as all that follows suit. So with this new task the government had handed them, the ROC had planned and built 1,563 bunkers across the country. The first was a prototype over at Farnham in Surrey, built in 1956. Many tests were conducted on the bunker to assert its usefulness, hopefully meaning Britain wouldn't end up with useless bunkers scattering the landscape, like Albania. During these tests it was found that the concrete and compacted soil around the bunker could reduce any external radiation by a factor of 1500 to 1, and only minor changes had to be made ready for full mass construction of these underground sheds. To build one, if you wish, at home, you should excavate a hole approximately 9 feet deep, and within you should cast a reinforced concrete box, with a floor roughly 12 inches thick, walls about 7, and a roof 8 inches thick. Once you have your concrete box, you should then cover it in a layer of bitumen to waterproof the bunker, and like icing on a cake, you must cover the bunker with soil and compact it down, and it should look like a mound. You should also remember to include an access hatch, an air shaft and two metal pipes that extrude out of your newly made mound. And that is, in simple terms, how you make one of these monitoring posts. Now construction of these bunkers were rather slow as the original plan was to build 100 in the first year of 1957 and then up to 250 the year after. But by mid-1958, only 94 had been handed over to the ROC, with a further 110 being built. The bunkers were fairly pricey, with the average cost of one being £1,000, or 20000 in today's money. But some escalated up to £8,000 or £160,000 today. There are some exceptions, as not all bunkers were built equally, the most notable is the ROC bunker within a cellar of Windsor Castle. Now inside, the average post would be a chemical toilet in a little room opposite the ladder to get in, and then one large room to your left of the ladder, which included beds, tables, chairs, radio, telephone, battery, generator, and many bits of measuring equipment, so you wouldn't have to open the hatch and say, yep, still nuclear fallout. And for the most part, there would be three volunteers stationed in each of these monitoring posts. The full-time members of the ROC had their own control centres across the country. I said earlier the ROC were dissolved in 1996, a few years after the Eastern Bloc had been dissolved itself, and with many technological advancements, meaning they weren't needed anymore. But some of the ROC posts had been closed down far before 1996 with almost half of them closed in 1968, not even 10 years after most had been built. Many more followed with closure due to varying issues such as flooding and vandalism, and all posts were closed for good in 1991. The ROC posts today are in mixed states, Buxton is in good nick, not in the way of the farmer so it stayed put, and far enough away from the youths so it remains intact. Now Buxton's is sealed, so I did attempt to show you guys inside one without the need of other people's pictures. However, after a lovely bus ride to Macclesfield, I got to the bunker, which I knew had been vandalised, thus meaning easy access. However, once I was there, the golf course it sits on had decided to build a new wooden hatch, of which it is subsequently swollen and blocked access. 
but, you know, I tried. I'll leave a link below to the amazing map where you can find info and locations on all the ROC posts in the country. And as always, I've cleaned up in this video a full wheelbarrow worth of rubbish, and I cleaned out the boating lake of branches, twigs, and unfortunately a couple of dead animals. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And until next time, ta-ra! 52 miles an hour.